first of all, congratulations um, for, you know, and welcome back to Southeast Missouri State, and, and you're here tonight to accept the award on behalf of your father, um, who was a great assistant football coach here. Um, just talk a little bit about, you know, what he brought to Southeast Missouri State. Well, uh, talking to all his uh, old players, that he certainly brought a high degree of toughness, and uh, that he uh, has some legendary stories about uh, practices and uh, well-respected uh, with his players and uh, and as a, a teacher here too that I know he has the university has an award um, for him on the academic side with the uh, student athletes and uh, himself so he, uh, I think he'd be very honored by both these recognitions for sure sure he coached a lot of uh, championship teams here mm -hmm. um, and he also coached uh, several players that went on to the NFL correct um, talk about did he you know, what were some of the, the best teams that you can remember with him coaching here? You know, I was so young, uh, I can't specifically remember, but I know, you know, Kenny Hyman years, and then, then you know, I hate to just, you know, single out any, any particular one because he, you know, he loved all his teams. So, uh, but yeah, they, uh, and they all played hard for him, and uh, he expected it. So, I think they played up to the level that he set for them. And then, I mean, tonight, you know, as I mentioned, you're going to be accepting the award mm -hmm. um, on his behalf. And how proud is that for you to, oh, to be here as a son and, oh, and go up and get that award? Tremendous. Right? Just tremendous. It's, uh, I can't really put it into words. And, uh, and I'm sure he'd be very humble to know that after all these years that uh, neighbors, friends, colleagues, uh, you know, players that uh, didn't know this. If he was looking out at the crowd, he'd be, he'd be very humble. Well, first off, congratulations um, to you and Mary, who uh, also goes into the Hall of Fame tonight. But 29 year, years here at Southeast Missouri State University, I guess how much has this profession changed um, over the course of the years? Well, it's changed a lot. The, the technology, you know, is a lot better, but, uh, uh, you know, the basics, you, you've got to know, you know, your athletes, your coaches, you need to know your media. That hasn't changed, but, uh, you know, certainly the technology. Uh, we had the manual typewriters when I started, and now you have all the computers. I mean, you 21 award-winning publications. You got the Cosida Lifetime Achievement Award. I mean, so many different accomplishments throughout your career. Were there any um, other ones that really stood out more than others for you? Oh, I think this one stands out more than the others because it's uh, more involved. It was, you know, it's fun tonight being out here amongst the, the basketball players who are on the team, the 2000 team that played in Salt Lake City. So these other, Galen McSpadden, I didn't know. I visited with him here earlier tonight, but the others, Christine Reidenauer. I was in Mississippi when she won the national championship. I was with that basketball team in Salt Lake City when they were, uh, you know, at all of their ball games. So, and seeing those types of people, uh, seeing Marvin Rosengarten, the former athletic director, and, you know, and you go on and on, but just a lot of good friends that developed here at Southeast. And you meet so many great people in this profession, as you mentioned, student athletes, coaches, media. Um, you also have a lot of good staff members uh, oh, yeah. during your time here, and Kyle Schwartz is one of those guys that's here in attendance tonight. And uh, I mean, just talk about you know some of the things that you may have you know taught some of the people that you mentored. Well, they taught me, uh, uh, but uh, you know, Kyle did a great job when he was here as a graduate assistant. I remember when he came in, and he added a lot to the department. Uh, uh, Patrick Clark is here. He helped out for a number of years. Uh, uh, you know, so there are a lot of good people who've come through, and uh, that was always one of the things that stood out for me when I was at COSIDA, is all of the former student assistants, graduate assistants, you know, that are now SIDs are still in the profession, and I always took pride in that. Is there any, uh, like, when you were here, was there any rival that you enjoyed most during your time with seeing your, your Southeast teams that you covered? Well, I think at the Division II level, it was Central Missouri State. They were very good in all sports. Southeast was good in all sports, and that was a great rivalry. Uh, at the Division I level, you know, the matchups with Murray State were always very big and still are. And then, um, obviously, the most, one of the most notable accomplishments was your streak. 851 <laughs> consecutive games for NCAA. Division one. Uh, well, I always said that uh, you got to have two things for that. You got to have good health and a good wife. And I was blessed in both departments. Christine, first of all, congratulations um, on being inducted as part of the 2012 Hall of Fame class here at Southeast. I guess first off, what does this honor mean to you? It is so special because of all the enduring relationships and friendships that we made all those years ago still exist today, and it's just humbling to be in a group of people. Um, that are already in the hall, including my husband. <laughs> so.
so it is special. Since you just uh, mentioned your husband, mm -hmm. um, I guess it's got to be a little bit more special knowing that you're going into the hall um, with the person that you're, you're spending your life with. That's right, and he was such, you know, obviously such a big part of my success. Without him, that national championship would have never happened, and so it is really special for him to already be in there and for me to be able to acknowledge him tonight. And not too many people get to uh, say that they were a national champion. No. Um, talk about that experience for you. You know, it's, it is one of those things that is so special. No one can ever take that away from you, and it's something I'll fondly look back on. You know, that same day, Mike won his national championship, and the men's team also won, so it was um, just once in a lifetime event that is, you know, we remember fondly. And then does, uh, does Cape Girardeau and the university look any different to you? Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was just commenting that this building didn't exist. We, um, I'm wondering where the bubble is. That was the indoor track that we called. Um, where we ran, and then also the bus that we lovingly called the Tylenol pill that we used to travel in that looked like a Tylenol pill. Um, so yeah, it, it looks amazing. Um, we just drove around a little bit this um, evening before we came and um, just thrilled. Well, first of all, I just want to start off by saying congratulations and welcome back to uh, Southeast Missouri State University, but it's been quite some time since you've been back here on campus. Uh, how do things look? A lot different. Uh... I understand this is a 25th year for the Show Me Center, is that right? That is. I've never been in it. So I've been away about 30 some years. But sure. uh, come back once in a while, you know, for my father who lives over by, by Advance. But uh, I haven't been at the Show Me Center, so this is exciting. How, um, I mean, what does this honor mean to you? I, I mean, I know you've been selected to several Hall of Fames and <laughs> or inducted into several Hall of Fames, but what does this honor mean to you to be inducted here at Southeast? Um, it's probably the, the nicest thing that's, that's happened to me. Uh, this is where it all got uh, jump started. Uh, coming out of high school at Zalma High School, I was very small, about 5'8", and I uh, never thought I had really a chance to make the team here. And Coach Jules gave me a chance and uh, put me in the weight room, made a man out of me, and uh, I got my degree and, and uh, got drafted and went on. And uh, So, you know, I owe a lot. This is coming back home. I get to share it with my uh, family and my friends. and I get to actually thank some people tonight who I haven't really done that. And uh, to do it publicly, I don't guess it gets much better than that. I mean, your, your playing career, I mean, it was just absolutely phenomenal here. I mean, you played at a time where, with your career, in total, there were 91 games played. As a left-handed pitcher here, you had 20% of the wins on the mound during your career. I mean, that's a phenomenal you know, achievement, seeing as how the game has just changed so much since then. And I mean, you're looking at seasons now where you're playing a minimum of, you know, 56 games. Can I be real honest with you, Jeff? I didn't even know that until a few years ago. My SID uh, at Seward County Community College, uh, when he nominated me for the NJCA, he started digging up. He comes walking in and he said, Coach, I got to nominate you for SEMO Hall of Fame. I said, for what? He said, we got drafted. I said, yeah, but so does a lot of other people. And then I saw those stats, and I couldn't believe it. Coach Hules, he just wanted you to play. He wasn't a big numbers guy, and uh, I respected that. So you guys surprised me uh, yeah, tremendously about four or five years ago when I found out that those uh, stats existed. But, you know, uh, again, I wasn't very big. I had to work harder than anyone else. And... Um, he gave me the opportunity, and, and uh, I look back, and with, with, with Capitol Parks being 307, 305 down the right and left field line, and no infield dirt, those uh, stats, I'm not sure. You sure, you sure they're right? Um, but anyway, um, you know, you've definitely taken your, your baseball career to the highest level, you know, going into the Padres organization, um, spent some spring trainings with them, and um, now, you know, you are an athletic director and the head baseball coach at a community, community college. But what have, you, what have you taken from your baseball career here at Southeast? And I guess how have you applied that to where you are now? Well, if I say a whole lot, I'll give you my whole speech tonight. But uh, uh, what have I taken? I've taken uh, the fact that uh, you do not think that the game owes you one thing, and neither does life. Uh, you have to work hard and you have to put good people around you and like your fielders and the rest of your team and, um, and you've just got to not expect anything. 
Uh, you just got to keep working hard, and, and uh, you know, you do good things, good things will happen to you. And then just one final question, but are there any good, funny, unique stories, you know, maybe uh, just one that you'd like to share with us? Well, I've got uh, three or four tonight, so I wouldn't want to wouldn't want to blow it, but uh, uh, yes, I've got I've got several. But uh, can we wait just to the, for the speech? Fair enough. Uh, CAA tournament, Southeast Missouri men's basketball team. What does this honor mean to you? This honor means a lot to me, um, especially since that you know we always consider ourselves a true team and a family, and to get inducted into the Hall of Fame with these guys is just just an unbelievable honor. You know, we worked really hard that season, and, and it didn't just start during that season. It started after we lost the previous year. Um, everybody, myself, Mike Branson, and uh, Brian Bunch being dedicated and having a, having a goal to get to the next level. And um, for us to accomplish that and then to get this type of recogni recognition is um, unbelievable. And so many honors, you know, with this team and accomplishments. Where do you begin? I mean, you guys ended Murray State's 47-game home court winning streak that year. That in itself is is huge, seeing as uh, how big that rival is with Southeast. Oh yeah, you know, with Murray State, you know, I, I, I talk about my junior year. Um, they ended our season with um, with that last second shot by Aubrey Reese, and um, like I said, for us to beat them on their home floor and end their nation longest winning streak of 47 games, it was kind of like. You know, we're, we showed them that we're not going to get bullied by them, any, by you guys anymore. And you know, for us to then continue that success and ride that on all the way through the OVC tournament and into the NCAA tournament was, you know, it just showed our dedication that year. And you know, it's 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 a team effort, so it was great. And I mean, in, in today, I mean, your team has the only NCAA Division One tournament appearance here at uh, Southeast Missouri State University. Yeah. Talk about that experience going out to Salt Lake City, Utah, and nearly upsetting LSU. That was that was probably one of the best experiences of my life. You know, um, you know, to go up against LSU, who had I believe three future NBA players, one one of them being a number two overall pick. Um, I you know I remember the um, announcer, one of the reporters, came to me and was saying that you know how does it feel to get to make it to the tournament, but now you're going to get you know stomped, and you know we kind of took that personal. You know, because we didn't just want to be there just to, you know, just to show up and be a stepping stone for someone else. We wanted to go out there and fight. And um, that that experience and what we did out there, it just showed, you know, everybody that Southeast Missouri State, that team was for real. You know, I wish we would have continued that success throughout the years, but, you know, hopefully sooner or later they'll turn it around. And then at tonight's event, you know, they've got the commemorative uh, special edition sections there of uh, when you guys went on to the NCAA tournament. I guess describe, you know, the feel around here when that happened, if you can take us back and just, I mean, this is a big basketball area. Mm -hmm. and how, how did the, the community and, and the city of Cape Girardeau rally around the team when you guys were going to the tournament? Oh, it was unbelievable. I mean, our games were, we had 7,000 people at our games. You know, I think we were second in the conference in attendance at like 6,000. Um, when we came back from beating Murray State after the OVC Championship, I believe we had like maybe 500 people outside the stadium waiting for us. Um, I mean, the, when we traveled on the road, I mean, we had a great number of fans following us. So this area loves their basketball, you know, and they want to support their basketball. I mean, we have this great facility here that, um, that needs to be filled up and, and wants to be filled up, but, you know, we have to put a good product out there for them. And I think that's what we did. Um, when, we, when I played, we put a good product out there on the floor and they believed in us and we believed in them. And, uh, we wanted to be successful for them. And then this is just my final question, but you know, you're back in the Show Me Center now. I mean, this is a facility that's 25 years old mm -hmm. um, this year. Um, does it look any different to you? It looks the same, you know. It, 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 you know um, it looks a little smaller to me because I, I guess I haven't been here in a while, but I love this place. This is one of the most beautiful places I've ever played in. And for me to call this place home for three years, you know, I, I, every time I come back here, I just get emotional because I just love it. And I know we, you know, just thinking about how, how many hours we spent practicing in here and how many, how many battles I've been through with these guys, you know, it's just, it's just unbelievable. I love this place.